astronaut Richard Truly talking about the mechanical arm, and if there's just a touch of pride in his voice, well, it's deserved because he's not only the operator on this mission, he's also helped to design it. He's been very uh, closely involved in the development of what will be extremely important because of its duties later on when these are working missions and it'll be putting satellites out into space and picking up satellites and other things in space and bringing them into the spacecraft for a trip home later. Our coverage of the Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in just a moment. Get a move in. School plays today. Get them going. I know what you need. With the breakfast, they'll warm up too. Your family deserves a hot, wholesome breakfast. Like the kind Swanson's cooking. Pancakes and sausage. Oh, local chair America. Sit right down there, America. Can I hear your lines? Swanson's cooking. Just for you. Hickory Farms of Ohio would like to serve up some delicious holiday gift ideas. Let's start with our famous beef stick summer sausage. How about some good rich cheddar or some mild gouda? You see, we've got holiday gifts filled with all sorts of mouth-watering delights. And you don't have to guess whether somebody's gonna like what you give them. Come to Hickory Farms. You can find out for sure. We'll give you a taste of old-time country goodness. Un sac. Y a-t-il une adresse Voyons. Des gants Un passeport américain Américain Isotoner gloves have style that's hard to resist. Style that begins with flattering fit. Feel how one size shapes to your hand. As if made for you alone. Oh, you found my handbag. So slender, so stylish, they complement any, <laughs> almost any wardrobe. Isotoner gloves by Aris. What is it between isotoner and a woman? Thursday the 12th lost that loving feeling till Levitt breaks the ice and a lot more. Put you up for a medal of power. You must be trying. <laughs> then Dad puts the moves on Alex's girl. She's two-timing you with your old man. <laughs> and is breaking Louie's heart on Taxi. Then on 2020, witness the genius of Ray Charles and the launching of the most awesome war machine ever known to man. Are we ensuring world peace or threatening it? Tonight, starting at 9, 8 Central and Mountain on ABC. We are back now at the Kennedy Space Center. This is Frank Reynolds along with Gene Cernan and Columbia, the space shuttle, has been off the pad now for one hour and 12 minutes and 20 seconds. We don't have to be quite so precise anymore because we got past that magic 31 second mark that stopped us last week. And I must say, Gene, it was a relief to go right by that and see everything just proceed right on as planned. All the last minute glitches and worries and even the transcontinental shipment of a part from a spacecraft that uh, is still under construction. Uh, that's the challenger, isn't it, out there at Palmdale? Yeah, we made an ex uh, another major step into the testing of this vehicle so that it can truly become operational as we hope it will. The uh, spacecraft is out of touch right now. Uh, they're over, well, the Southern Pacific, passing over at the moment some pretty exotic uh, territory, I gather. Uh, the, uh, they're over at American Samoa. Well, they passed the Samoan Islands, and that's a familiar place to me because that's where I recovered on two of my flights. And it's uh, uh, very difficult for them to see those islands. Uh, of course, they're still in darkness over there, as a matter of fact. They'll be coming across the equator in about another, uh, oh, seven minutes, I believe, and starting what... Uh, we term as their second orbit around yes. the Earth. And when they come over the United States for the first time, they'll come in actually across Mexico, won't they? Southern uh, Across the southern Mexico. tip of Baja, California, yeah. central Mexico, probably just a little north of Houston if they're on a the track that uh, they had planned to be on, out over northern Alabama and Georgia and across uh, the Atlantic coast somewhere around uh, North Carolina. I wonder if they'll be able to see this place. Oh, yes, they will. They oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. From, uh, from 130 miles up, uh, just a few hundred miles north, they'll be able, and they'll be looking for it, too, because that's, you always like to look where you've been. All right. Now, it might be interesting. I'm sure it would be interesting to you to see uh, where you might see it tonight. Uh, if you're in Honolulu, fine. Fort Worth, Austin, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, St. Petersburg, Florida, Miami. Just keep looking up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> if you know the right time and the right place to look, uh, with the size and the reflective capability of the, uh, of the space shuttle, uh, I think it'd be very easy to see. And it's exciting to yes. see a star. It almost looks like a star going through space. Well, and you know I, what it is. Do you remember going out and uh, seeing Sputnik? Oh, I do. I do. I do. Sure. 
I sure across do. Across the heavens. That reminds me, the uh, interested observers, of course, that the uh, at everything that takes place on this uh, mission will be the Russians, who uh, don't have a shuttle but are working on one. They do have a space station, of course. And that reminds us that uh, the shuttle, while not a military weapon in itself, does have military significance because it can carry weapons into space and it can carry other things that are important in the military sense. Our Pentagon correspondent, John McWethy, has prepared a report on just how the shuttle might be utilized by the military, which is, of course, very interested in it and has expended a considerable amount of money on it. Here's his story. Long before America's first space shuttle roared off the launch pad, the Soviet Union was secretly working on a few surprises of its own. It wasn't long after Columbia landed safely at Edwards Air Force Base that intelligence sources began detecting a bustle of activity at Russia's launch center in Turkestan. In June, the Soviets launched a Cosmos space vehicle different than anything the West had before seen. From verbal descriptions, artists have pieced together the picture of a spaceship with more than half a dozen docking ports and mysterious pods on the outside that could cover some type of weapon. Intelligence sources speculate that the Russians may be preparing to man this complex continuously, adding more and more modules to make it seem more like home, keeping a man in space at all times. This would allow the Soviets to conduct military experiments, to have continuous military surveillance of the Earth, and to man and fire weapons from orbit. This is America's Saturn V rocket, the biggest in the world. It carried the Skylab into space in 1973. There is evidence the Soviets are now building an even bigger booster, and no one is certain exactly why. This is the runway at Cape Canaveral, where the U.S. space shuttle someday will land. Intelligence sources say the Soviets are also building an oversized runway. Again, no one is certain why, unless they are building a shuttle of their own. Intelligence sources say the success of America's first space shuttle flight and its obvious potential for military uses has not been lost on the Russians, nor has the fact that the shuttle program has been kept alive by Pentagon interests and the shuttle vehicle itself modified to meet military requirements. Its 15 by 60 foot cargo bay, for example, is bigger than NASA wanted, and high maneuverability was something else upon which the Pentagon insisted, giving the shuttle the ability to change its orbit laterally by more than 1,100 miles, thus allowing it to avoid landing at unfriendly airfields in an emergency. The Air Force is building a launch and landing facility at Vandenberg Air Force Base that is just like the Cape Canaveral complex. In addition to Vandenberg, the Air Force is building its own mission control headquarters that will be located in Colorado near the NORAD Early Warning Center. In its earliest operational stages, for the next five to eight years, the shuttle will be used by the military primarily as a way to get defense satellites into orbit and, if necessary, to bring them back for repair. But the uncertainty over whether the shuttle will perform as advertised has caused the military to keep its old booster rockets in readiness, should they ever be needed. 10, 20, even 30 years out, the shuttle mission will change. By then, it could be used to carry weapons into space, weapons already under development. In the early 1970s, the Air Force used the invisible beam of light from a laser to shoot down an unmanned airplane. Now they've mounted a more powerful laser in a converted transport. All the while, laboratory tests continue. Waves are coming on. Wind tunnel coming on. Target, titanium, the tough, lightweight metal used in fighters and missiles. The laser, mounted aboard the shuttle, could be used in the vacuum of space to intercept Soviet intercontinental ballistic missiles on their way to targets in the U.S. Lasers in space, in theory, could wipe out the Soviet ICBM threat. The real use would be uh, as an anti-ballistic missile uh, defense system so that you could destroy in the boost phase shortly after liftoff submarine-launched or intercontinental ballistic missiles. It also can be used to destroy uh, aircraft flying at high altitudes, such as bombers carrying nuclear warheads toward the United States.